Greetings and God's blessings on this special day as we celebrate his goodness in our lives. And as we here at Redemption have much reason to give thanks uh, for this beautiful day as this afternoon we install Reverend Joshua Parrish as pastor here at Redemption. So it's a, it's a terrific day. It's a day to uh, uh, reflect and give thanks to God for his goodness to us. Our sermon theme today, The Workers Are Few. It's all about workers in the harvest fields, and that really is an appropriate gospel for our thoughts uh, this day. So we welcome uh, Pastor Parrish and Mrs. Parrish uh, into our midst today. Our opening hymn, our opening song, Ancient Words. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate, and I will declare your greatness. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may serve you in joy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray.
Almighty eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning at verse 2. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle reading for today, the second Sunday of Pentecost, is recorded in the fifth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, beginning at verse 6. Paul writes, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the, ra by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through the one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear all creatures of our God and King.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the word of the Lord, we make joyful confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our song of the day, I Will Follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus, dear friend in Christ, the famous explorer, Rear Admiral Robert Perry, the first person ever to reach the North Pole, was on a polar expedition one time, headed north with one of his dog teams. At the end of the day, when he stopped to check the latitude and his bearing on that latitude, he was perplexed to discover that he actually was farther south than he had been at the beginning of the day. Well, the mystery was eventually solved when he found out that he had been traveling on a gigantic ice flow. The ocean currents were taking the ice flow faster south than the dog team could carry him north. In other words, he thought he was running in the right direction, but he was getting farther away from his goal. You suppose the modern-day church is in that same situation? It moves in many directions. It tries many programs. It attempts many tasks, but all the while getting farther and further away from the goal that the Lord Jesus had for them in the beginning. The one thing that interested the Lord more than anything was the harvest. He called himself the Lord of the harvest. It was the harvest that moved him to come into the world. He said in Luke 19, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The harvest is also the reason we are here. Jesus said in John 20, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Jesus Christ is still the Lord of the harvest, and he is still calling for laborers to join him in sowing the gospel seed and reaping souls for eternity. Matthew in our gospel this morning tells us, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. That's what he did. The Jewish historian Josephus tells us that at this time there were over 200 cities and villages in the region of Galilee, which was an area about 40 miles wide and 70 miles long. Because the land was so fertile, it was a, a boom area for farmers. Number one occupation of that day. Josephus estimated that the smallest villages and cities contained at least 15,000 people. So based on that assessment, Galilee probably contained at least 3 million people. And Jesus went about village to village, city to city, trying to minister to as many of them as he could. It's the main task of the church, is it not? Actually, the two main tasks of the church are teaching the Word and preaching the Gospel. Now, the Gospel ought to be sociable, but Jesus did not believe in a social Gospel. 
He did not come primarily to heal the sick or to perform miracles. He did not come primarily to raise the dead. He came, he came primarily to preach the gospel, to gather the harvest, and to bring people into the kingdom of God. Not a social gospel as such. Now, I believe that every church ought to have a benevolent ministry, and we ought to have a benevolent spirit to us. But what does it profit a man if we feed him, if a naked man is clothed, or a poor man is given shelter, if that individual loses his own soul? The point not to be missed is this. Jesus was doing all that he could for God and all that he could for others. He didn't want people simply to come to church. He took the church to people. We ought to learn all over again that we come to the church to worship, but we must leave the church to work. Gallup survey some years ago discovered that only 10% of American church members are active in any kind of personal ministry, and that 50% of all church members have no interest at all in serving in any ministry. And yet Jesus came to serve you and me. And in this ministry, he saw the misery of the people. Matthew tells us, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw the people the way they really were. He could look past their faces and see their fear. He could look into their hearts and see their hurt. Henry David Thoreau once said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Think about it. How many people in our community, in our metro area, are living lives of quiet desperation? When the Pharisees looked at a multitude, they simply saw a crowd of people. But when Jesus looked at a multitude, he saw a flock of sheep. He saw how those sheep were hurting. We are told that they were weary. The word in the Greek literally means to be harassed or troubled, or battered and bruised. They were worn out, exhausted. He saw how the sheep were helpless. That word literally means cast down, to be prostrate and unable to get up because of a mortal wound. If a sheep ever falls over on its back, it will starve to death because it cannot right itself and get up. The world is full of people, not just old ones, who have fallen down and can't get up. Jesus saw the sheep were helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. It can be said that a person without God is not only lost, he is hopelessly lost. Someone has described a lost person this way. The lost person is a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that is not there. Can you picture anything more hopeless than that? You probably know, at least I have read, that sheep are some of the most stupid animals in the world. And sheep cannot find their way if they ever wander away from the flock. And if they ever get scattered, only a shepherd can bring them back together. 3,000 years ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote, All we like sheep have gone astray. And when Jesus saw those hurting, helpless, hopeless sheep, these walking wounded, the Bible says, he was moved with compassion. Compassion is the missing jewel in the crown of the modern-day church. It has been said many times, the world will never care how much you know until they know how much you care. How true. We will never care for people the way Jesus cared for them until we see people the way Jesus saw them. 
too often. We don't have compassion for the lost because we don't see them as spiritually dead. We just see them as people who don't go to church. We see them as people who have questions or doubts or they're angry or bitter or whatever. We don't see, G see people the way Jesus sees people. We don't see them as spiritually blind, dead. We see them far worse, spiritually blind, unable to see the truth. It's sad to be physically deaf, but it is far worse to be spiritually deaf and unable to hear the truth. It is sad to be spiritually lame, but it is far worse to be spiritually lame and unable to come to the truth. And so Jesus says to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The harvest is greater than it ever has been. There are over 7 billion people on this planet. How many have been able to hear the gospel, receive Jesus as their Savior? So what does the Lord want us to do? He calls us to prayer. Amazingly, he does not ask us to pray for the lost. He asks us to pray for the laborers. He does not ask us to pray for the harvest. He asks us to pray for the harvesters. He asks us not to pray for the sheep. He asks us to pray for the shepherds. You members of redemption are receiving by God's grace a new pastor this afternoon as the Reverend Joshua Parrish is installed as your pastor, your shepherd. Let me remind you that you are to be in prayer for your new pastor. He won't have all of the answer. He won't have all of the energy or all the time, but he is following the prodding of the Holy Spirit in his life to enter the pastoral ministry. He will care for you and will care for the lost. He will preach the full counsel of God and will carry out a ministry of word and sacraments in your midst. You will be in ministry together, seeking the lost for the kingdom. There is a harvest. Jesus called it a great harvest, waiting to be gathered, ripe for the picking. The problem is not with the size of the harvest. The problem is with the lack of harvesters. Maybe you heard this little story. It's about a little boy who was asked to go somewhere by his dad, and the boy looked at his dad and said, I ain't going. Well, the dad didn't like that kind of language, and he, he said, son, you're not supposed to use the word ain't. That is not proper English. He then proceeded to give his son an English lesson. He said, now listen carefully. First person singular, I am not going. Second person singular, you are not going. Third person singular, he is not going. First person plural, we are not going. Second person plural, you are not going. Third person plural, they are not going. He said, now son, do you understand it? And his son said, yes sir, it looks like ain't nobody going. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Ain't nobody going, or at least not enough. You know, there are only two gears in a Christian's motor. Go and no. Which are you? My dear friends, what a wonderful day it is. We celebrate a new pastor to welcome him and his wife into the redemption family. But don't get ex excited about it today and then forget his name tomorrow. Be laborers in the harvest together, that God might be praised and many may be saved.
to the glory of God. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues as we bring our prayer requests to the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we come together this morning, the church, wherever we may be. In the midst of these trying times and uncertain times, we are still the church. And you have still called us to be a part of the harvest, to be laborers in that harvest. Oh, gracious God, give us strength, give us enthusiasm, give us purpose that we might still be the church, even though, Lord, we're not able to meet together at this present time. Gracious God, the workers are few, and we thank you for those workers who are in the harvest. We rejoice today, gracious Lord, as we welcome Pastor Joshua and Catherine Parrish into the family of God here at Redemption Lutheran. Lord, we pray your blessings upon Pastor Josh and Catherine, that together as, as co-laborers in the vineyard, they would join with us in proclaiming the good news of Jesus so that the world may know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh Lord, be with them as they begin their new charge here at Redemption. Grant wisdom and strength and energy and, and, and enthusiasm for carrying out the gospel ministry here at Redemption. We thank you, Lord, for blessing them with the gifts necessary as they come into ministry together. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to pray for our nation. We continue to pray for our society, our metro area. For those who are hurting today, those who are struggling over the loss of life, for the Floyd family, we continue to lift them up and ask that you would comfort them during this difficult time. Be with all who are struggling at this time, who don't understand and who can't understand. O oh Lord, watch over each of us and keep us in your care that we together might work together in this world and that we might see one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, Lord, we commit this time, this nation, this world into your hands. We ask for your your protection. We ask for your presence in the lives of police officers throughout the country, throughout the world. Through those who raise up uh, the voice of protest, may their voices be heard. And Lord, as we come together, may we be reminded that even though we are different, we are the same. Even though there are differences among us, we have the same one Lord Jesus Christ. And for that, that, we praise and thank you in the precious name of Jesus, the Lord of the harvest. Amen. As the church in this place, we pray together the prayer from Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing song, the benediction song. God's blessings to you all. Again, this is my, uh, my swan song, as they see. This is my last service with you before Pastor Parrish takes over uh, this afternoon. It has been a joy to be with you these past eight months. Thank you for your, uh, your love, your care, your, your friendship, and for laughing at the jokes at the right time. I appreciate it. I've missed that these past months. There's been nobody here t- to laugh uh, at the appropriate time. So I look forward to that happening again. Uh, The afternoon service, the installation service for Pastor Parrish is at three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, It will be an outdoor service. We are confident the Lord will give us good weather and we'll be able to uh, welcome Pastor uh, Josh and Catherine into our midst. Also be aware that uh, this coming Wednesday there is a communion service at 6.30. Uh, is right now, those will continue uh, uh, each Wednesday evening at 6.30. We certainly want to invite you to come. Be a part of the installation uh, this afternoon. To that end, God's blessings upon you all. Again, it has been a privilege to be with you. As always, go in peace. Serve the Lord.